I'm Steve for This Hook With Cars and this is Mark, my mobile automobile rescue cart. I built this cart about six years ago and from the view that you have right now, it looks like a typical roll cab. I have my tools stored up here. I have drawers for other tools. I have books. All my scan tools are in here. So I can roll this cart up and I have everything inside of here that I need to get a car going again. But this is not a typical roll cap. And if I turn it around, that's where things really start to get interesting. First, on the top of the cabinet, I have a solar panel. That solar panel is used to uh, charge up an ultra capacitor that I built myself that I have mounted into the bottom. The power from the solar panel runs down to a solar charge controller. You can see that the green light is on. That means that it is charging it. And the yellow light means that it is fully charged right now. Over here, I have a battery status meter. So I can hit this and I can see how charged up my ultra capacitor is. I have an inverter right here. So I have three household outlets right here with 110 volts. Powering the inverter is this quick disconnect connector here. And that's so that I can plug in a jumper cable that I've built so that I can jumpstart cars off of the ultra capacitor that's in this cart. Over here is an air hose. I can go into my cart, grab a tire inflator, and it does have air. This cart has a built-in air tank and a built-in air compressor. So if I need more air, I just turn the inverter on. Now you can hear the air compressor is running in the cart. If I wanted to plug the cart in, it would switch over from charging the ultra capacitor with the solar panel to using this small battery charger right here. And this is the way that I built the cart six years ago. But technology has changed a lot in those six years. And I think I can improve a lot on this cart. And I'm going to do that by upgrading it with this Blue Eddy EB55 solar generator. By using this solar generator, I can eliminate almost all the stuff on the back of this cabinet. I will keep my connector so that I can plug in jumper cables to it. But other than that, the rest of this can go. All of that is built into this one little box right here. I will also be changing the air compressor that I'm using in this cart. I have a small one that I like to use that I can program to a certain specific air pressure. So I will get rid of the antiquated unit that I'm currently using. Before I tear this down, let's take a look at what powers this cart. This is the jumper cable. This has a quick connector right there so that I can connect that to the back of the cart. Plenty long of cables to run over to a vehicle and charge it up. Then I have an air compressor with a small tank. And that right there is the ultra capacitor that I built that powers this cart. I'm going to change to not having the compressor built into the cart at all. So I can remove this one. This extension cord that came in here for the air compressor now needs to be reversed because I'll be using this to plug it into the Blue Eddy. And the air hose can be removed completely because I will not have the compressor and tank in here anymore. And as for the ultra capacitor, that's going to stay here. That is still going to be used for jump starting cars. So I'll get these pulled out real quick. Now I have the extension cable reversed. I can put the Blue Eddy in here. Now I could almost stop right here. This supplies power, has 12 volt outlets. And all I would have to do is take this over to the wall, plug it in and I could recharge everything. But my next step is I need a battery charger to charge up the ultra capacitors because I'm not going to be doing that with the solar panels anymore. The charging of the ultra capacitor will be done with this onboard battery charger. So I can just plug this into the Blue Eddy and it will automatically charge this up. Now I'll plug in the charger. In a second, we should see it turn on and start charging the ultra capacitor. And there it goes, it's now charging. After I have all of this tidied up, I will cover this positive terminal so I don't get any shorts here. And because I'm using the Blue Eddy for my 
household wiring, I only need to charge this when I'm going to jumpstart a car, so I don't need to leave this on all the time. Already, I'm pretty much done in this drawer. Back here, this is the wire that comes from the solar panel. You can disconnect that. That's about the only wire that I'm going to be keeping. The solar charge controller can be removed. I won't need power to the inverter anymore. All this can go to use in something else later. This wire right here went to the battery charger that is over here, so I won't need that anymore. This could of course be repurposed to using a battery charger on a car and using the cart to power the battery charger. So I will keep this around. The extension cord that comes from the Blue Eddy, I can plug over to my outlets right here. And then I can just switch it. I can either take this over to the wall and plug it in when I want to, or I can power everything off of the cart. When this plug isn't in use, I have a cover right here to cover it up so that nothing goes and shorts between those. The only thing left to do is to hook the Blue Eddy up to the solar panel so that the solar panel can charge it. So here's the cable that I made. This is used to adapt to the input for the solar charging on the Blue Eddy and adapts it to what I already have on this cart. So if I built this right, when I hook this up, the solar panel up here should start charging the Blue Eddy. In the short time that I've been installing this, you can see the battery charger is now green. It has fully charged up this ultra capacitor. Over here is the input from the solar panels. I can also plug in a wall adapter to the round plug. Let's plug this in and see what happens. It's not reading anything for input right now, but I'm not surprised because we're indoors. We'll have to take this outside and then see if it charges. The sun's starting to go down, but I did find a little bit of sun here in the parking lot. I have the top of the cabinet open so that the solar panel is facing directly into the sunlight. And if we look down here, it shows that we are charging at one watt. Obviously, if the sun were out and I had more sunlight, it would be charging a lot quicker. For the periodic use that this thing sees, this should be sufficient. I mentioned to you a small air compressor that I like to use. This one I got at Lowe's. I don't think these are sold anymore. I'm hoping that I can find a replacement because I have had one of these break before. It has plastic gears in it, but I've been using these for years and I really like them. When you plug in the air compressor, you can set it to the pressure that you want to inflate the tire to and then just hit the start button. <laughs> It will continuously run until that pressure has been met and then automatically turn off. So I can roll this card up to whatever vehicle I need to inflate some tires on. Even if it's outside, it will just recharge off the solar panel. I can start my air compressor and then walk away. I can come back later, see that the tire is inflated and I don't have to stretch hoses all the way across the parking lot to deal with a flat tire. The air compressor can be tucked in here nicely with everything else. And once I'm sure where everything goes, I'll tidy this all up. I also quickly wanted to show you how the jumper cables work. I would connect this up to the battery of the car. And then this connector just slips on here and powers the jumper cables. In a situation like this where you're using an ultra capacitor, that can unload all of its energy very, very quickly. So you would want to make sure that the jumper cables are connected to the other vehicle first before plugging this in. Because if these clips were to touch each other like this, with an ultra capacitor connected, I'm sure that the parts that touched would just vaporize. Take a look at this short video that I filmed with the Blue Eddy before I installed it into this cart. There's a link in the description below on where you can buy your own EB55. So check that out and you might save some money on it. When I am out on the road filming my cars, I have a lot of equipment that I need to keep charged up. I'm using a lot of cameras for various angles. 
I have this little Pelican type case that here that I built into it, a USB charger that can charge up to 10 devices. I also hold some of my equipment in there. And I keep all of this charged up by using one of my Blue Eddy EB55s to keep everything powered up. The EB55 has its own USB port so I can plug devices directly into it to charge them. I get four household AC outputs as well as a car DC output. This allows me to charge all of my devices on the road and I could even bring a battery charger with me and charge up the car's battery if the generator were to have a problem. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe. Oh, my God.